guys, this is Dodoid. So for day five of our advent calendar, we're going to be looking at this PowerBook 145B, and um, this is how I'm powering it. So uh, you've probably seen this thing before, before we talk about the laptop. This is a um, bench power supply, and I have set it to 7.5 volts for the PowerBook because I do not have the original charger for this. So let's open up the PowerBook. And you can actually open it with one hand, which is more than I can say for some other laptops. And uh, for some reason, the power button is on the back, so we'll reach around there and fumble for it and turn it on. You'll hear the old Apple startup chime, and the screen should come on as soon as the hard drive does, which can take a while. So now that the laptop started, I should probably show you what's down here. As you can see, you have a keyboard, which feels better than a lot of other laptop keyboards from the time. I guess it hasn't gotten quite as spongy. Uh, you have some buttons in kind of strange places. And you have something that laptops today don't have, which is one of these. And if you think about how thin a laptop is today, right? Now take a look at the PowerBook's trackball. This is how many times thicker than the new MacBook? And this is just the pointing device. There's got to be stuff underneath it as well. So we'll put this back down and screw it on. And we can now use the PowerBook. So as you can see, like a lot of early Macintoshes, the screen is black and white. And, you know, because this is a flat screen display and a relatively early one, you can see we have an unintentional pointer trail. But, um... It does, this is the setting that shows up best on the camera. So we can bring up some things like a calculator, and you can see what this old version of Mac OS looks like. So I don't know what I was last calculating with this, but we can type in like 46 plus 5 equals 51. And uh, let's take a look at the laptop specs. So we go about this Macintosh, and there it is. So you can see we have a PowerBook 145, we have 4 megabytes of memory, we have uh, our system software taking up about 1.2 megs, and we're running System 7.1 from 1992, apparently. So that, that's, that gives a bit of a date to this OS and this laptop. And uh, let's take a look at what else we have on here. So I did, I did not reinstall this laptop when I got it, because I dumpster dived it, and I don't have the floppies to reinstall this, so I haven't bothered. But you can see that there is some stuff that the previous owners left on here, like uh, this hot air balloon game. So we'll open that up, and it only runs in the corner. And that's the PowerBook sound. So we should be able to start. There we go. And you just click to move up. And you can see we have a bit more of that um, trails here. But um, this does give you a bit of a good example of the resolution of this display, which I think would have been quite impressive for its time. And uh, as you can see, our balloon speeds up, which causes the graphics to look quite bad. So uh, let's exit out of this. The trackball is not quite so nice anymore. So let's try Clarisworks next. This is one of the other programs that I found on this laptop. So I don't know how to use any of the other programs, so I'm just going to stick to the word processor. I did a previous take of this where I used the spreadsheet, and it did not go well. So we can type in, like, Dodoids PowerBook. 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 And, uh, again, I don't know too well how to use this, but we should be able to go, like, uh, center? Yeah, okay, so... It does work, it has a basic word processor, uh, but here you can start to see some of the problems the display on my unit is having. You can see these weird um, dark streaks up and down the screen. This is a bit of a side effect of old screens like this. And we can shut it down. So uh, yeah, that's just the uh, Macintosh PowerBook 145B, a bit of early Apple there, and a rather interesting pointing device on a laptop. So, uh, thanks for watching. Bye.